All right, guys, welcome to lesson 13.2. Uh, last time we graphed sine and cosine. Today we're going to graph secant and cosecant graphs. And you're going to see that the process is pretty similar. Um, let's go ahead and begin with a little opening exercise here. So um, to graph cosecant, which is our goal for now, um, I want to start by graphing sine also at the same time, just so you can see it, because sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. So let's begin here. So at zero, sine is equal to zero. So I'm going to plot a point right here. At zero degrees, my output is zero. Now, what's the reciprocal of zero? Well, there isn't one. So cosecant is actually undefined at zero, and that's because the cosecant graph has a vertical uh, asymptote at that point. So the cosecant graph will not cross this line. It cannot touch it. It's like an invisible barrier it cannot cross. Let's do the next point. What if I plug in pi over 6 to sine? Well, if I do that, I get 0.5. The reciprocal of that, well, actually, let's plot that first. So at, at pi over 6, I'm going to put a dot at 0.5. Now, if I take the reciprocal of that for the cosecant value, it's 2. So at pi over 6, I'm going to go way up here to 2. So I'm graphing the cosecant in blue, and I'm graphing the sine in red. And you'll see why I'm graphing them together in a moment. Next, sine of pi over 4 is 0 0.707. So we'll put a at pi over 4, which would probably be, I'm guessing in the middle here, eh, somewhere like that anyway. Um, it'll be at 0 0.707, so a little bit above half. The reciprocal of 0 0.707 is 1.4. So at pi over 4, we're going to put a dot at 1.4, and so on. I'm just going to keep doing that, and we'll kind of see what comes out of the woodworks as we do this. Now, at when I get to pi, if I plug in pi, if I plug in pi for sine here, I get 0. So at pi, it's back on the x-axis for the sine function. And once again, the cosecant function will be undefined at that point. So we get another vertical asymptote. All right. Now, this is not a whole sine function. It's only like half of it. But that's enough for now to make our point. So since cosecant is the inverse of sine, it's kind of like it takes the shape of sine and flips it upside down almost. But at the same time, where the sine function touches the x-axis, those are vertical asymptotes. So the sine function will go through the asymptote, but the cosecant will not. It'll just get, it'll shoot up into infinity like that. It will never cross that line. So that's kind of the idea there, all right? And so here's the big takeaway I want you guys to have for that. Um, whenever you have a sine graph, which looks like this, right? Basically, anywhere the sine graph touches the x-axis, you're going to have a vertical asymptote for your cosecant function because that's where cosecant is undefined. And also, the cosecant function is inverted from the sine function. In other words, it'll look like that on that side, and down here it'll look like that, and so on. So a cosecant function looks like a whole bunch of like little parabolas squished in between a bunch of uh, vertical asymptotes, both upside down parabolas and right side up parabolas. So that's what it is. Just so you guys know that the sine graph is not actually part of the cosecant graph. It's just something that we do to kind of guide ourselves in the process of graphing it. And so cosecant graphs actually look like this. They're kind of weird looking little functions. All right. So now let's let's kind of summarize this here. Where where are the asymptotes of secant and cosecant? Well, since sine is zero, anytime you are on the x-axis on your unit circle, like for instance at zero, pi, two pi, three pi, or any multiple of pi, that's where cosecant is going to be undefined and we'll have a vertical asymptote. Okay? Cosine, now we, we didn't do secant, but this process that we went through on the last slide here, where we graphed cosecant by doing sine first, we could do the same thing with, co with, with cosine and secant. I could just put cosine here and find all the numbers and 
secant here and do the inverses and graph them, it's going to look the same. It's just going to be in a different spot. And so cosine is equal to zero at multiples of pi over two or odd multiples of pi over two. So one pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, seven pi over two, so on. Any odd multiple of pi over two, cosine is zero. And so since cosine is zero there, its reciprocal secant will not have a, a solution there, it will be undefined. And therefore that's where secant's asymptotes will be. Now an easier way of saying it is basically wherever sine crosses the x-axis, that's where cosecant will have a vertical asymptote. And wherever cosine touches the x-axis, that's where secant will have a vertical asymptote. Okay? And here's our graphs. So here is our classic looking sine wave here, right? But notice that since the sine function touches the x-axis here, here, and here, all those are vertical asymptotes for the cosecant function. And since cos sine makes like an upside down U shape here, if you will, cosecant will be inverted from that. And down here, sine makes an, a right side up bowl. And so the cosecant graph will be inverted from that and be upside down, but it stays in between these asymptotes and never touches it, just so you know. And cosine does the same exact thing. So the only difference is that cosine starts here and its basic shape looks like this, but the same principles apply. When cosine touches the x-axis, that's where cosine is zero, so secant will be undefined and have a vertical asymptote. Likewise, the curves will be inverted from what they are in the cosine graph, squished in between those asymptotes. And that's basically how you graph secant and cosecant. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at our steps here for graphing secant and cosecant functions. So step one is to graph the corresponding sine or cosine graph. So if you're, graph, if you, if you're trying to get a graph of cosecant, then you're gonna graph sine. If you wanna get a graph of secant, then you graph cosine because those are the reciprocals that they go with. Now, when we actually graph the sine and cosine, I would encourage you to use only dotted lines because really this part is not a part of the actual graph of the sine and cosine. The actual part is the weird looking U shapes. That's the graph that we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make these um, lines here, the, uh, the, the sine and the cosine graphs, we're gonna make them dotted because we don't want you to think that those are actually a part of the actual function. They're just guiding lines for us to know where to put the curves for the one that we want, okay? So anyway, so graph either sine or cosine depending on which one you want using dotted lines. And then put vertical asymptotes anywhere where the sine or cosine function across the midline. And then finally, you can sketch the cosecant or secant graphs between the asymptotes, okay? And that's the idea there. So let's go ahead and jump into our first example. Um, I'll go back and forth between graphing with degrees and graphing radians, just because once you get us to get used to both of those things. So let's begin here. To graph, I'm going to start by um, drawing an x and y axis. I'm going to make four marks here, and we're going to call this one um, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. We're going to, now for cosecant, what I'm going to graph first is I'm going to graph the reciprocal of cosecant, which is sine. So I'm going to think of that as sine. Now my midline is 2, so I'm going to go up to 2. And I'm going to draw a dotted line from my midline. And then my amplitude is 3, so I'm going to go up 3 from there to find my max, and down 3 from my midline to find my minimum, and I'll put those in now. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and graph my sine function. But as I do this, I'm going to use a dotted line, remember, because we're not really graphing sine. We're just using the sine graph to get the real graph we want, which is cosecant. So sine starts at the midline, and then it goes up, and then down, and then down, and then back up. And so we're just going to draw a little dotted curve this time. 
And then we can actually just kind of keep the pattern going like that to give us a fuller picture. Okay, now, we re now we're ready to graph the actual function that we want. I'm going to do that in blue. So we're going to find all the places where our sine function touches the x-axis. That's here, 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 and here, and so on. And those are all places where we're going to have a vertical asymptote. This graph looks like a mess, doesn't it? All right. So on this side, it's going to go upwards because my, my sine graph, you can, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's going like this. It's just kind of hard to see because of the dots. But um, there's that one. And it just kind of changes after that. It goes upside down, right side up, upside down, right side up, upside down, etc. And so the blue graph there is actually our cosecant graph, okay? So that's number one. Let's go ahead and take a look at another problem. Let's go ahead and do number two. So secant. So for secant, we're gonna start by graphing the corresponding function to that, which is cosine. Cosine is the inverse of secant. So let's graph that first. This time I'll do degrees, just to kind of switch it up a little bit. Doesn't really matter though, for now. All right, so here we go. I'm going to graph my midline. My midline is negative three. And my amplitude is a half, so this is going to be a pretty squished looking function. So there's my midline, my max, and my min. All right, now when graphing cosine, cosine starts at the maximum, and then it goes down, down, up back to the midline, and then back up to the top there. And so here's the, here's the cosine function. And I'm just going to keep the pattern going after that. All right, now I'm ready to graph the actual secant function. So to graph secant, we're going to put vertical asymptotes anywhere the cosine function crosses the midline. So that would be here, 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 and here. And so we're going to draw some vertical tangent lines here or not tangent lines, asymptotes, I should say. And then we're going to draw some peaks and troughs. So it comes up and it touches the where the cosine function would be, and then it comes back down. Down, hits where the cosine function is, and then comes back up, and so on. And there's the cosecant, I'm sorry, the secant graph. All right, we'll do one more example. Um, for this last example, the reason I'm including is because of the negative, just to remind you of how to handle those. So let's do that. Okay, my midline is 1 and my amplitude is one. So my midline will be here, my max will be here, and my minimum will be right on the x-axis. Now, we're gonna be graphing the corresponding inverse function, which is cosine. Cosine, when it has a negative in the front, starts at the minimum. So it's going to start down here. It goes up one, up one, down one, down one. All right. Now we're ready to go ahead and graph the corresponding secant function. So we're going to put vertical asymptotes where it touches the x-axis. 
<clears throat> and then we put our little parabola shapes in there. They're not really parabolas, but that's what I call it just to keep it simple. And there's our graph. All right. So go ahead and let you guys practice a couple of these. Um, go ahead and pause the video here. Give number one a try. And um, when you unpause it, we will go through the solution with you. All right, so for number one, step one is to set up your graph. Next thing is to graph your max, midline, and minimum. The maximum should be at one, the midline should be at negative one, and the minimum should be at negative two. The next thing to recognize is that since we're doing cosecant, we're going to do the inverse of that, which is sine. And so now since we have a negative in front of our sine, we're going to start at the midline and go down and then continue the pattern there to get this. And there you go. The next thing we need to do is to put in our vertical asymptotes. And then finally in purple, we can graph the uh, actual secant graph. I'm sorry, cosecant graph, which is the purple little parabolas there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second one. So here we have the graph with the midline, minimum, and maximum. The maximum is right on the x-axis, the midline is at negative 3, and the minimum is at negative 6. Next, we graph the corresponding um, reciprocal function of secant, which is cosine. Starting at the top, we go down and have our basic cosine shape there. And of course, we want to go ahead and continue that pattern along there. The next thing we're going to do is put in our vertical asymptotes. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and just put in our cosecant curves, which would look like this. I'm sorry, secant curves. I always get those flip flopped. And that's the end of it. All right. So that's graphing secant and cosecant. Basically, uh, it's just two more steps than graphing regular sine and cosine functions. The extra two steps are putting in vertical asymptotes and then throwing the little parabolas on there, and that's it. So we'll put that to practice in class next time we see you. Until then, have a good one.